I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us would. They cannot be reckoned upon in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore my heart faileth me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, to make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha, aha, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. Hello and welcome everybody to today's edition of Code Word Barbalon 666 Danger in the Vatican on Saturday. February 10th, 2018, and I am joined here with Jörg Glissman in Belgium. We have the wonderful sun is shining today, and ah! I'm enjoying a great Sabbath. Oh, that's terrific, brother. That's wonderful to hear that. All right. Well, it's been a little bit uh, rough for me yesterday, uh, but uh, I'm here. I made it, man. I made it. That's... That's the most important. So yeah. this is, uh, what, six days in a row? I think so, about uh, about that, yeah. I don't I don't have the counter running, you know, because... <laughs> That's a first. We are, we are only at page 108 of about 1,000 pages or a little bit above 1,000 pages in the two mm, editions the two of books, this work. So. The two books that we have at the moment, yeah. yes. That's doesn't, right. It doesn't matter. We are still scratching the surface only, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and I don't and, know uh, I don't know how far we will go into that today because of other things uh, that can take our interest, of course. But it's okay. It's okay. Just uh, do your introduction, Brett. That's, that's all right. I'm here <laughs> listening and ready whenever you are. Okay, cool. All right, Jörg. Well, we're all loaded up and ready to go. And it's the Jesuit Bible's changing of the word. Now, this has got to be one of the most tragic, most damaging, and most sensitive things that has ever happened to mankind. Yeah, in that sense that taking the word completely away is probably even worse than falsifying it. Because even in a falsified Bible, at least there is some truth, you know. Yep. 
um, I mean, I don't want to. Well, this is a, true, and this is wanna... where we go into that road of casistry and sophistry, which the Jesuits yeah. are specialists in. And the subtleties of it, it's just incredible. I'm not going to play an advocate for the devil, you know? No, no, But I, no. Think, I think that a slightly falsified Bible still is better than absolutely no Bible at all. Oh, I have okay. to agree with that statement. And, absolutely and, right, Yerk. And I think we have to remember that it is written in the Bible, the Lord knows his sheep. That's right. And... Whether you have a Bible or you don't have a Bible, when the Lord knows you, he knows you. When he wants to pull you out of that deception that is called the Antichrist system, that is called the Roman Catholic Church here on this earth, then he will do according to Revelation 18 verse 4, where he states, come out of her, my people. Yeah? He doesn't call anybody out of there. He calls his people out of there. That's right. Very important to understand that, you know. That's right. God yep. God did not create every man for salvation. That is maybe hard, but that's the truth. It is harsh, yeah. Very harsh. And the problem is and the problem is he made salvation only uh, depending on him, not depending on man. We have nothing to do with our own salvation. Absolutely nothing. It is by the grace of God. And whether you are one of the chosen or you're not. But even when you're one of the chosen, you can go astray. Yes. And you can go a wrong way. And the God, uh, God has to pull you out of that wrong way. And maybe these videos help you on that. And the point that I am saying this is because I am now 51 years old. Mm -hmm. And yep. until I was about 45, I didn't know God. But God knew me. Mm -hmm. He was directing my life in any way. I had no idea it was him. But now when I look back, I understand it all. But he revealed, my, he, he re, he revealed himself to me about five years ago. Something mm -hmm. about that. Five years, six years, I don't know. Right. I don't keep the count, you know. That's not important. No, it's not. Um, no. Important. Uh, there are so many people who say, "Oh, I was, uh, I was, bo uh, I was born again on that day in that year." Blah blah blah. You know, I, I don't, I don't keep those things. If that was of any importance, God would have made it clear to us that we keep that date. So, yeah, but that's the point right. It's kind of like celebrating a birthday or something like that. Yeah, you know, Same the point. The, the point that I want to bring, Brett, is um, when I say that uh, God does not, uh, does not. Uh, create everybody for salvation he also creates a lot of people for damnation a lot of people who hear this will probably be offended sure and and say uh, oh but he chose me or, or why didn't he choose me well you know the point that if he chose you or didn't choose you is something that you come to probably uh, maybe only in the later part of life like i i didn't know for 45 or 46 years that he's chosen me yeah, you know, That's and right. all of a sudden he set me on a path that I got interested in things that never interested me before. Mm -hmm. That all of a sudden the pleasure of sin went away. Yes, that's you know, a good point, Yerk. Very because good un point. Until that certain moment, I had pleasure in doing sins, me too. not yeah, not even not even not even completely understanding that I was sinning. Yes. Yeah? Yes. But having pleasure in things that now, as I know God, as He revealed Himself to me, I absolutely detest and I repented of. Yes. And now I'm trying to live a quote unquote Christian life. I try to live after His commandments because obedience is the finest form of worship. If I don't obey my God and I don't obey His laws, then I don't worship my God, but then I'm going to worship another God. Right. Even though I don't want to go too far away from this, you mentioned already the chapter 10 that we are starting to read today in um, yes. Cold Word Babylon, the Jesuit Bible's changing of the word, and there are a few things that I want to say about that without even reading that book for the moment. Please go ahead. Um, you know, in the last uh, broadcast, uh, when we gave the full view of what's going to come in the next reading of Cold Word Babylon, 
I mentioned already that I have this book that you sent me some time ago in a wonderful package along with other books. Yes, I have uh, that from book Gail, too. Yep. Yeah, Gail from Ripplinger. Gail Ripplinger, New Age Bible Versions. Yes. Now, yeah. first and for all, when you hold that book in your hand and you just look at the cover, this is a book as a Christian you just want to get rid of. You don't want to even open it with the dragon on, yes. uh, uh, on, the, on the top. And then you open it up. And it starts with two quotes from the Bible, and I'm going to read these quotes to, from the Bible to you. They are in Jeremiah chapter 13, verses 15 and 17, or through 17. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud. Be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. But if ye will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and mine eye shall weep sore, and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. And there follows another quotation from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. Quote, For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Unquote. So the second part is an absolute warning not to um, corrupt uh, God's word, not to corrupt the Bible. But then you go to the next page and then I already start getting shivers down my spine. Because the very first quote on the next page is from Tex Mars. And Tex Mars is a Jesuit educated person. He says so on his own website himself. He says about this book, it may be the most important book ever written, unparalleled, stunning, expose. Well, even though I haven't written the complete book, I cannot but agree with Tex Mars but I have a slight bad feeling, a slightly bad feeling about reading in the book New Age Bible versions a in a foreword or in the beginning a quote of a Jesuit trained, probably high Freemason like Tex Mars. I am not very comfortable with that. Okay? So why am I saying that? I'm saying that to you that when you read this book from Gail Ripplinger, New Age Bible versions, always use your own discernment, put the Bible next to it, and measure everything that is written in this book against the King James Bible. Even though, of course, normally the quotations from the King James Bible are all right. But do your own research. Don't take a book like this in, like you need to inhale the air to breathe, to live. Oh, but you know, Yerk, if you don't mind... That. I'll say a little something about Tex Please. Mars and Alex Jones and Bill Deagle, Dr. Bill Deagle. You know, I used to have contact with these people. And I used to think they were, you know, somewhat righteous. And, and uh, I would listen to some of Tex Mars' um, uh, audios he would do on uh, Bible teaching. And some of them were pretty legit, actually. But, you know... Uh, then I found out about what's really going on with Genesis Communications Network. And it just made me want to throw all this stuff out. That I, you know, I've gotten a couple books from uh, Tex Mars and, and over the years, you know. And, and of course, I was listening to uh, Eric John Phelps, too. And... Um, and of course, Eric John Phelps and Tex Mars were at odds. You know, they uh, they were very much at odds. Well, they still are, I'm sure. But you know, then I found out Dr. Bill Deagle was at odds with Eric Phelps. <laughs> well, what's the deal? What's going on? Well, you know, I, I have. Um, I actually had contact with uh, Dr. Bill Deagle for a little bit. And, um, you know, I thought he was something special. Until um, one day I was listening to his broadcast, and he had someone on the, on the air. 
And um, he was, <clears throat> oh, how did that go now? How did that go? He was, uh, oh, I don't know. Somehow or other, I just got, um, I got to thinking that, um, you know, uh, there's got to be something wrong with Dr. Bill Deagle. I don't understand what it is yet, but something's wrong because of the way he's talking about um, this whole idea of um, being a alternative media specialist. Um, I can't remember the quote. I can't remember exactly what he said, but I'll tell you, it really creeped me out. And uh, that was the beginning of... Uh, really starting to question him. So I turned to Eric John Phelps and I was listening to Eric John Phelps from thereafter and I gave up listening to Dr. Bill Deagle and then I find out about futurism and then I'm done with Phelps. <laughs> but I didn't really learn that Eric, Eric John Phelps was backing futurism until recently. Well, within the past, what, year? Two years? Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's a long, slow, gradual process of learning. Yeah, you know, I think um, the one point that you can make about all these three persons that you mentioned, Tex, Mars, Bill, um, Bill, Bill, you, I just wanted to say. Yeah, um, Bill Deagle. Uh, no, no, Bill, Bill Deagle and uh, Alex Jones is they all agree to disagree. Yes, that's right. That's right. But you know, Dr. Bill Deagle and Tex Mars team up like you and I do, Yerk. And well, they, that they doesn't are... mean that they team up with the Holy Spirit in their midst. Huh? No, it doesn't at all. Like, actually, that's no. spot on because they don't quote scripture. They don't read the Bible on air. Well, they might very vaguely, mm -hmm. but not but, on But that's But that's know. what we do, Brett. When we yes. come together, we have the Holy Spirit in our midst. Well, that's that's just it, and you know the the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be here if we're not, uh, you know, if we aren't being uh, uh, diligent, it won't be here. That's the point. You know, it's that's it's just, the point. Yeah, it, yeah, it's we can lose it, Yerk. We can lose it easily, very easily. And I'm just speaking for myself here. I'm not speaking for you, but you know it. There are a lot of things that get in the way, okay? I'm a musician. I have a lot of old friends that are very involved with very dirty things. And they come around every once in a while, and I have to deal with that. But sometimes they listen. Sometimes they're willing to, you know, listen. And I got to say, sometimes it's, it, it, can, it can help them. You know, if they can just comprehend that the Bible is the remedy, it's not that we, the men, we as men are the remedy. We're not the remedy. We we have to point to the Messiah. He is our remedy. We only. as individuals, yeah, we, we are only men. I mean, we're just flesh, but in, when we're in the Spirit, we're not of this world. That's the very unique thing about being biblically Christian. That is a very true thing that you just said there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And and you know, we're we're very odd. People will treat it as very odd and very obtruse when they're in the world, when their mind is not in the spirit. They're in the world and they they are, we are an offense to them. And you know it's interesting because I never really, you know, uh confronted Dr. Bill Deagle. In some ways, I don't think I have the uh, fortitude to do it because, you know, he's a lot older than me and uh, he's got a lot of clout or a supposed clout. You know, he's got all this fancy stuff going on and, you know, and I just, I just read his book, you know, part of it and it just, you know, I want to burn it. Um. Mm -hmm. It's really way out there, man. Way, way out there. Far from the path. Far from the path. You know, we're supposed okay, to let's, restore let's, the old path. So, yeah. Let, let's go back to the subject. Please. Um, 
why does it send shivers down my spine when I open a book like the New Age Bible versions and I have to read a quotation from Tex Mars in the beginning of that book who says that this is the most important book ever written? Maybe. It is unparalleled and stunning, ex and stunning expose. I'll tell you why. If I would ever write a book, I would not want a person like Tex Mars to be on the four page yes. of my book that before anybody yeah. opens this and reads this. And this is what should call out your vigilance when you read this book. I'm not saying anything negative about Gail Ripplinger and the research she did in the she did in this book because I haven't read it. Okay? I know excerpts from it. I know the video documentation she made on it yeah, because she did oh, this yeah. uh, New Age Bible versions video. I think it is more than two hours. You can find that on YouTube. I watched that uh, 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 once or twice. I'm in no way here to judge her work. Don't get me wrong. But I don't understand how anybody who, makes, who writes a book and calls it the latest research supporting the authorized King James Version and then have a person like Tex Mars have a, um, yeah, uh, and, uh, how do you say that uh, when, when, when he says this, uh, this well, words, this is kind of a sentence, this is ki kind of an, an endorsement or whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want an endorsement from a, from a person like Tex Mars. That's, that's the only point that I'm saying. Nothing against the book. And even getting back from, getting away from the book New Age Bible versions, even though I have it here in my hand and I keep it next to the reading that we are going to do, I just want to say one other thing before we go into Cold War Babylon, because otherwise the people will say, oh, Brad and Jörg, you are again 20 minutes ranting about something that has nothing to do with the book. We want to read the book with you. <laughs> okay. Um, I have gotten some time ago a book. I think you, uh, I don't know if you, if you sent that to, I think you sent that to me also. Yeah. This is from Ch uh, Jack Chick uh, Publications. Mm -hmm. Did the Catholic Church give us the Bible? That's right. Yeah. And there it says on the back side of the book, it says, there is not one history of the Bible, but two. One is a history of God preserving his words through his people. The other is of the devil using the Roman Catholic Church to pervert God's words through her, quote unquote, scholars. This book... Did the Catholic Church give us the Bible is kind of a comic book. It is an artistic book. It has uh, drawings. It's a um, how do you how do you call that? Uh, you don't do, you don't call that comic, right? Sure. Do you have another word for that in uh, in English? Um, or is it, is it comic? Uh, yeah, know, with, maybe with just uh, what would you call that? Characters or I don't know. Yeah, I think comic. I guess that's good enough. I'm. I yeah, okay, like, like the books right of now. Alberto Rivera, all they are all kind right. of in, in a comic yep. style. Yep. And this book too is, is made in this way. And mm -hmm. I scanned the complete book to my computer, mm -hmm. and then I wrote David W. Uh, David W. <laughs> uh, yeah, David W. Daniels. That's his name. David W. Daniels. An email, and I asked him permission to use this scanned book to make a video of the book reading of Did the Catholic Church Give Us the Bible? And um, he agreed, he answered my email, and he agreed that I can use the scanned book when I'm producing a video of this book reading and discussion. Did the Catholic Church give us the Bible? So I guess at the moment when I'm saying this, this is redundant, because until this part of Cold War Babylon is being released on my channel, on Juggler 66, I probably did that book already. Did sure. the Catholic Church give us the Bible? But up to today the 10th of February 2018, I haven't done it, but it's one of the next projects that I'm going to do as soon as I finish the complete reading of The Secret History of the Jesuits in English. This is my next English project that I will start very first. I just wanted to tell you that we are, at least I am, and I know that Brett is via me and also via his own studies, also a very lot busy with accepting the King James Version, the authorized 1611 King James Version, as the only true preserved word of God in our time that we have today. And why is that? Well, because of chapter 10, what we are going to learn right now in this book, 
Cold World Babylon, what we are going to read in this, what we are going to read then in the future when it comes to did the Catholic Church give us the Bible on my channel, you can check these videos out. And you can, of course, check out the book from Gail Rippling and New Age Bible versions. You can check out, as I said before, Walter Feit's videos on Battle of the Bibles and Changing the Word. And if you want to, I think I have about 25 different web pages, all supporting the King James and um, all pinning the nail to the, the, the the, uh, the donkey to the nail. How do you say that? Nail to the donkey. Yeah, um, pinning, pinning the pinning the tail on. Or how does that go again? Pinning the pinning the tail yeah, on the donkey or something. It, it's your that. language. You should know that. Well, <laughs> the way you know, this is kind of. I'm sorry to be so clumsy, Yerk. <laughs> it's, but it's okay. you know what? Listen, I'm really clumsy in the morning. It's just my nature. <laughs> I'm waking no, up. No problem, Brad. Let's have a little <laughs> bit fun with that. So then we... No, I'm just saying it for the listeners because I know uh, they're listening to me every morning now and it's like, you know, kind of groggy and <laughs> a little, <laughs> little on the rough side, you know, not okay. too sharp, but I'll try. <laughs> But let's, it's for let's your, call it, you know, uh, pinning you the get... nail on the donkey. I have, I have lost yeah, my train of thought in the meantime anyway. The on, pin, pin, uh, ah, but the point I'm is sorry. that we really should go uh, on, on reading this book and that everybody should use his own discernment about the Bible and that we understand that all the forgerized Bibles, you know, this is a point that I often make when I talk to Brett and when I talk to Tom and when I talk to other people. It is only the King James Bible of 1611 that is always attacked. The readers of the NIV do not attack the readers of the RSV or the NASB or the New King James or the REB or That's the right. RSV That's or right. the CEV. That's right. They are all, they are all uh, as I said, that um, uh, Alex Jones, Bill Deagle, and Tex Master. Oh, not only they them, all but agree oh, to disagree. Man. And that's I'm with the Bible, you, the same thing. Yerk, you just hit the nail straight on the head because, you know, it's not only just that, but also the churches, the people that go to these churches are going through some kind of program right now. And that's why Yerk and I think the Freemasons are in the church big time because. Listen, even people that are like Bible Belt, Bible thumping Christians are even questioning the King James now. Even them. Oh, the word doesn't mean that. Oh, it doesn't mean that. You're kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Even you? I'm sorry. Something's incredibly wrong here, Yerk. Yeah. Something That's is fine. incredibly wrong. So please continue. Let's go to the bottom of what is terribly wrong in this world when we are reading the Jesuit Bible's changing of the word. We start with a quote on page 108 from Hector McPherson, the Jesuits in history. And um, yeah, I, I almost forgot it. I just have to open New Age Bible versions again because I want to say something else, because under this Tex Mars quotation in the beginning of that book, is a quotation of Dr. Frank Loxton. And he was on the working committee on working on the NAS Bible. Yeah? And here is a quotation what he said. Quote, I must under God renounce every attachment to the new American standard. Bible version, that is. Yeah? I am afraid I am in trouble with the Lord. We laid the groundwork. I wrote the format. I helped interview some of the translators. I sat with the translator. I wrote the preface. I am in trouble. I can't refute these arguments. It's wrong. It's terribly wrong. It's frighteningly wrong. And what am I going to do about it? I can no longer ignore these criticisms I am hearing and I can't refute them. When questions began to reach me at first, I was quite offended. However, in attempting to answer, I began to sense that something was not right about the NASV. Upon investigation, I wrote my very dear friend, Mr. Lockman, explaining that I was forced to renounce all attachment to the NASV. 
The product is grievous to my heart and helps to complicate matters in these already troublous times. The deletions are absolutely frightening. There are so many. Are we so naive that we do not suspect satanic deception in all of this? I don't want anything to do with it. The finest leaders that we have today haven't gone into it. The new versions use of a corrupt of a corrupted Greek text, just as I hadn't gone into it. That's how easily one can be deceived. I am going to talk to him, speaking of Dr. George Sweeting, the president of Moody Bible Institute, about these things. You can say the authorized version, the King James Version, is absolutely correct. How correct? 100% correct. If you must stand against every against everyone else, stand. That's what this Dr. Frank Loxton said here. And I agree with him. And this takes us back to where in the beginning I said, God knows his sheep. That's he right. may have done something wrong in the time when he was working on the NASV, when he was forgerizing God's word, yeah. but he came to the understanding that it was wrong later on, and that is why this is printed in the beginning of the book, New Age Bible Versions. This is proof, dear listener and viewer of this video, that it is never too late that God will call you out at the time that he says, now it is time to call you out of that system. It took him 45 years to do that with me. It took him about, yeah, I wouldn't say 50 years to do that with Tom Fress, but Tom always says that it took him so long because then he only got the full understanding. But I do not agree with Tom in that because he was a Christian before that. He was a betrayed Christian, okay, but yeah. he was a Christian. I was not even a Christian 45 years of my life. And now I really want to go into that starting chapter 10, of mm -hmm. Code Word Babylon. I'm sorry, but I really needed to say this in advance and read this little quotation of uh, Dr. Frank Loxton in the beginning of this New Age Bible versions book. So the quote from Hector Macpherson of, in his book, The Jesuits in History, starts chapter 10, mm -hmm. the Jesuit Bibles changing the world as follows, quote, the Bible, that serpent, threatens us with its venom. It shall be changed. As soon as we are able to seize it, this cruel asp, the Bible, has left us no repose with what fangs it gnaws us. Unquote. This is what Jesuits think of the King James Bible. The Jesuits have expressed a deep hatred for the Bible. Quote, and then comes the same quote that we just read. Mm -hmm. If, as we saw in the previous chapter, the Catholic hierarchy regard the reading of the scriptures as, quote, an inexhaustible source of heresy, unquote, and if Antichrist Pope Paul III, quote, took many measures to stem the tide, unquote, of the heresy, then might we not expect that the Church of Rome, through her ablest agents, would seek to alter the contents of that book? Did you understand what I just read to you? It comes again, without any quotation marks, without any comment from my side. Listen closely. If, as we saw in the previous chapter of Code Word Babylon, the Catholic hierarchy regard the reading of the scriptures as an inexhaustible source of heresy, and if Pope Paul III took many measures to stem the tide of heresy, then might we not expect that the Church of Rome, through her ablest agents, would seek to alter the contents of that book? Who are the ablest agents of the Roman Catholic Church? The, the, strangely, the strangely, wonderfully, highly educated Jesuits, mm -hmm. who are so well educated in casuistry and sophistry, 
that you can talk with the Jesuit for an hour and don't even say anything of meaning, but filling all the time with meaningless words, because that's what casistry actually is. Fluff. Just understand it. The Jesuits were founded in 1540. In 1590, Francisco Ribera came out with his interpretation of the future Antichrist. Mm. That book only exists in Latin, and I don't know where you can ever get it, but that it exists, that is proven. That's no conspiracy theory. But to get that book and to read that book and to understand that book, I will probably never be able in this lifetime. Oh, because it's in Latin. Yeah, uh, and because it is nowhere to get. Oh, I found it. I didn't yeah, buy yeah, it, I, but I, I found I didn't, one. I, I didn't look for it because I don't speak Latin anyway. <laughs> I know, but I found one online a couple years well, back. You can, you can ask you can ask Richard Bennett if he they wanted like two thousand dollars for it. Yeah, I, yeah, surely and that's <laughs> kind of a cheap even. Yo, oh, jeez, yeah. But the but the point is, and probably also, uh, P. D. Stewart goes into that while we are reading this chapter. The forgerizing of the Bible had started in the mid-1850s. Until the beginning of the 19th century, there was no question for a Christian rich Bible to use. That's why the AV, the authorized version of the 1611 King James Version, is the authorized version. It was not authorized by King James. It was authorized through all the people, the millions and millions of people who copied that book Billions of times. Oh, man. And yeah. therefore, the majority it was text, authorized. Yerk. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's that's what it's based on, the majority yep. text. Yes. Yeah. But that is what why it is an authorized version. Yes. And that authorized version had to be falsified. And then we go to the New Age Bible versions and read on the beginning that this is a new case against the NIV, the NASB, the NKJV, the NRSV, the NAB, the REB, the RSV, the CEV, and so on, and so on, and so on. God spoke every word only once. Why are there 250 different versions of that word? God can only speak at once. And he spoke it only once. He never retracted of any word that he spoke because he is perfect. He is not like we. I can I can misspell something. I can say something and then later have to retract from that or recant from that. Brett can do that, but God, no. Every word that comes out of of the uh, out of the mouth of God is truth, and is incorruptible and is infallible and stands forever. So how can there be 250 different versions? How can there even be two different versions? There can't. If you understand who God is and how he works, at least from the little mindset that we as fleshly, wretched people have, there can only be one version of all of this. And that one version was the Law and the Prophets in Hebrew or Aramaic. And that was the New Testament written in Greek. Because Greek was the language of the world at the time. Even though it was the Roman Empire ruling in the time, Greek was the world language at that time. Now what is the world language of our time? Is it Spanish? Is yeah. it French? Is it German? Is it Chinese? Is it Mandarin by that way? Is it Japanese? Is it Indian? No. Even though we have two billion Chinese in this world and we have more than one billion Indians in this world, their language is not the world language. Wherever you go in this world, it doesn't matter whether you're on the North Pole or at the South Pole or somewhere in between. Whenever you utter words in English, this is, it is most likely that you can be helped with that language. Mm -hmm. I don't say everywhere, every time, and every moment, no, but it is most likely that there you will have the most success with, even when you go into French-speaking parts of 
Africa, when you go into Portuguese or Spanish-speaking parts of Latin or South America or, 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 or Middle America, yeah? even when you go to China, you will probably here and there have success with your English. So English is the world-dominant language. And God knew that, of course. So he made the King James Version his uncorrupt word for the end times that we are living in. It's very simple like that. Yep. Yep. That's right, Jörg. God yeah. sees the end from the beginning. He knows that when he puts his word in that Bible, in that language, it will be printed billions of times. And it was for the last more than 400 years since its first publication, printed billions of times. Billions, that's with a B, people. And we have to go and study it, and we have to accept that there is only one word of God. And of course, if you are speaking perfectly Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek, whatever, and you can turn to the original documents that are on the basis of the translation of the King James Bible, because the King James is just a translation. It is not the original word of God. It is a translation of the original word of God into the common English language. Mm -hmm. But God made sure that it is uncorrupted, and even the translators, when they added words into that Bible, they made sure that we know, because they said, Whenever we add something for better understanding, we will put the words in italics so that you know that these words are not in the original manuscript. But for understanding, for better conception, it is easier when we add these and these words, but therefore that you can check that, we will put them in italics and you know that they are not in the original. And second of all, you have to have faith. Mm -hmm. Through faith you are saved, and none of your works, less than any man should boast. That's what the Bible says. Through faith and through grace, but also the faith that you have, the faith that God preserved his word in this one version. And wouldn't you normally choose a version of the Bible that everybody attacks doesn't matter if you read the NIV, the NASB, the NKJV, the NRSV, the NAB, the RB, the RSV, the CEV, the TEV, the GNB, the Living Translation, and so on and so on. All these, pe these Bibles do, and people who read these Bibles do, is attacking one Bible, the King James. Someone who reads the NIV doesn't attack anyone who reads the NAB or the NASB. They go along, but they all have one problem. They have Bibles that do not explain themselves. And the King James Bible is self-explanatory. It may be here and there a little bit, quote-unquote, archaic, even though I appreciate this old English of the King James much more than I appreciate this new speech that we have nowadays. So something that you want to fill in, Brett? Oh, I just wanted to back you up, Yerk. I'm just loving to hear the words coming out of your mouth right now because it really resonates with me, the truth, because here where I live, <clears throat> we've been so compromised for so long with the, the truth about the Word of God that, you know, it's, um, I don't know, it just baffles me how people can neglect the the historical truths, but that's what's happened. They've neglected them. They've left them. They no longer care for them. They want to believe in this higher criticism type of thinking. It's very, very disturbing. So, Yeah, people don't understand that you have to have a perfect understanding of the history to make predictions to the future. They say, I don't need history. I just want to know what, bring, what, uh, what tomorrow brings and what the day after that brings. Oh, I'm, living, I am living in the future. I'm not living in it's the past. Like, it's like watching the weather forecast and depending on the weather forecast to tell you all truth. 
And then when it isn't true, then you're disgusted. And then you just keep on doing the same thing. Oh, well, I, re- I rely on the weatherman to, you know, well, it's going to be that way tomorrow, you know, and then it isn't. Well, you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I was, I always said, and you can ask my mother if you don't <laughs> believe me, I call her in right now. Uh huh. From from little on, I always said I don't care for the weather forecast. In the morning, I will look out of the window and I will see what kind of weather it is, and I will I will dress accordingly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's kind of how it should work, you know. And in Hamburg, where I grew up, they taught us there is no bad weather. There's only bad clothes. Yes. Or unfitting clothes. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, but that's that's right. What you said. There are people who who rely on this there are people who rely on their horoscope oh jeez oh yerk they live after that you just hit a real sore spot with me oh don't get me started (laughs) on the horoscopes i've got a story to oh man okay please tell your story Oh. Because there are there are numerous television channels that don't deal with anything else but horoscopes, you know? Listen. So please share your story, Brett. Listen, okay. All right. So, all right. You know I'm Lutheran. You know I grew up in the Lutheran church. You know that my dad is an artist. You know that I hang out with artistic type people. Um, you know, and I have for a long, long time. I just dearly love the artists. But, but, but there are some major compromises. And, of course, as you know, first to go is the truth. Always. The truth has to go first. So, when you are engaged in conversation with artistic folk and they start going on and on and on about, well, look, I have a sign, and my sign is this, and what's your sign? And, oh, I know things about this, and I know things about that. And you start drifting so far, far, far away from the truth, you don't even know where you are anymore. I mean, it's like you're lost at sea in a little tiny boat, and all of a sudden the waves start bobbling around. But anyway, um, how can I even begin this story i don't know but i'll tell you um somehow or other you know i am a carpenter and i work for different homeowners and years ago i was working for a lady in um in a town you know right next to where i grew up there in minneapolis um the twin cities they call it right you have minneapolis and saint Paul, talk about Saints, Yerk. Uh, they they have a baseball team called the Saints. So you talk about abusing the name Saints. Yeah, just just come here and find out how far it's gone. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, but uh, so I'm working this job with this lady, and um, uh, she wants to redo her kitchen. So I'm I'm doing all kinds of fancy cabinet work for her and uh you know all of a sudden my dad dies out of nowhere um well what happened was my dad went brain dead uh one day in 2006 and I flew out to uh Washington state to be with my parents um you know and be with my mother I'm sorry and um you know she called me up and she was just devastated and, you know, I didn't know what to do. I uh, talked to some people, and they suggested I just fly out there immediately, and it was the best suggestion I could have ever gotten. So I did. And, uh, well, and then I came back, and I was dealing with this job with this lady for a number of years. And years down the line, she was teaching me these little things about occultism. And at that time, I didn't know what it was. It was just like some kind of fun thing that she was doing, some kind of creative thing she was doing. Well, like, oh, this is really, you know, this is entertainment. Yeah, it really is. This is the devil's entertainment. It's called, it's called <laughs> astrology, the stars. I mean, come on. When we look in the Bible, what are the stars supposed to represent? The glory of God, that's his creation. 
it's not something that we really should have any kind of real knowledge of because it's beyond it's way beyond us um i don't think god would have made us to uh visit the stars because he didn't give us a starship now did he no oh, and he has his opinion about the stargazers and you can yeah, read that in uh, that's book right. of genesis yeah. <laughs> yeah in genesis right so um yay hath god said <laughs> I mean, I think of this when you were talking about your, um, you know, just changing the word uh, of God. Um, uh, how can we <clears throat> rid ourselves of this horrible um, creation that man has made and put upon man? Uh, this 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 kind of thinking it's gnostic thinking but you know if i were to just tell someone that they're not going to believe me um you have to do your own research like yurk and i are saying you have to research these things on your own and and you know you find out that all of this all of this astrology is babylonian mysticism there's nothing new under the sun here people this has been going on for a long 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 time and it just keeps going. I don't know um, where to take the story, um, but uh, I'll tell you, um, I was rather shocked to find out that uh, this lady I was working with was uh, actually reading a Kabbalah, Yerk. Mm. And at what time? Uh, at what point did you find out? When I left. I'll tell you, the day after I found out, she was embarrassed about this. Very embarrassed about me finding out about this Kabbalah. So I um, I just decided what I would do is just cut it off completely. That's it. We're done. No more. I'm no longer going to work with these people, period, or have any contact or call them or nothing. I just ignore it. And I did. And I'm very thankful I did. It was just one of those gut things, you know? Your gut tells you something like that, you got to listen. Because I've, you know, I looked up this uh, Kabbalah online and I was shocked. I just couldn't believe it, man. I mean, you got to be kidding me. You're going to go and study Babylonian mysticism. I mean, I didn't know at that point that's what it was, but I mean, that's really what it is. So, it's just one of those things you have to take a lot of time to think about. I went on a, out on a walk and I was thinking, and I, you know, I really need to separate myself from this. I can't be around this. Be you separate, said the Lord. Yes. Yes, when you know you got the devil in your midst, you got to get him out. The sooner, the better. Yeah, always brings me back to Ephesians chapter 6, Brett. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Take on the whole armor of God. That's right. You know, and Finally. I knew that there was something incredibly wrong with this lady because... Uh, she knew I was studying the Bible, even, you know, my corrupted Bible at that time. She knew I was involved in Bible study. And I would, you know, I had a lot of contact with her, and we sat down for dinner one day, and I says, well, why don't we say a prayer? And uh, she says, okay, well, I'll lead. She said, blessings on the meal, and that's it. That was her prayer. Blessings on the meal. I mean, what kind of prayer is this? Yeah, you know, not the quantity of words count, the quality of words count, and if you mean it, um, she yeah, can immediately say it was like, only, what she can are even say you? a prayer of only three or four words, Brett. But the question is, who is she addressing with that? That's the question. That's yes. why they. That's why yes. they also forgerized uh, the Lord's prayer. You know. Yes. Yes. They took of out of Matthew 6, I think uh, it is, yeah, um, if I'm not mistaken. It's Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, right? And in the end of the Lord's Prayer, in other Bibles, well, in the King James Bible, it says, um, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven as it is on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In other Bibles, but the King James, you can look for, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That is not in the other Bibles. Mm -hmm. It's forgerized. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Right. And um, lately we did our own Bible study, you know, with Tom every, uh, like this evening again, wonderfully, yeah, we will come right. together and do our Bible study on the Sabbath evening. Yep. And uh, we read through, for, for example, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. It says in my King James Bible, in whom we have redemption. So who is whom? Well, let's read verse 13 first. Um, giving, or verse 12, I start there. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us, uh, made us meet to partake us of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom, the Son, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now open the NIV and the other Bibles, and you will look for through his blood without any result. It is just not in there. They forgerized that. So they took away the forgiving power of the blood of Jesus Christ in this case. And that's the point, what they do with these Bibles. And I told you in the beginning, watch this video, Battle of the Bible from Walter Feit and other videos, and even this New Age Bible versions video from Gail Ripplinger, and she comes up with a lot of these verses. And look them up for yourself. I was astonished when I found out about Colossians 1.14, because, you know, when I watch these videos, I never take notes of that, so I don't keep all the... Uh, uh, all the verses that they say that have probably been corrupted. But mm -hmm. last time when we did our Bible study, we fell on that and we looked it up in all the other Bibles. And in 90% of the other Bibles, the blood was not in there. It was deleted. Yes. In a few other Bibles, it was in there, sometimes between brackets, sometimes normally as in the King James. But in 90% of all the other Bibles, the blood was taken out. And that brings us back to Coldwell Babylon. He says, um, he says here, um, might we not expect that the Church of Rome, through her ablest agents, would seek to alter the contents of this book, of that book? Well, who are the ablest agents? Of course, they are the Jesuits. They are the military arm of the Roman Catholic church. They are the ablest agents that Satan has. Because that's what we are talking about here, people. The Roman Catholic Church is the synagogue of Satan. And he is transferred into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no miracle that also his ministers are transferred into ministers of righteousness. And those ministers of righteousness are the Jesuits, trained by spiritual exercises in the, Ignatian, uh, in the Ignatian model to forgerize every word of God wherever they meet it. I'm going to continue reading in the book if it's okay for you, Brett. I Please. know that we are close to the hour, but Please I don't go care. Right let's, ahead. Go a little bit, let's go a little bit on here. For centuries, the author says, for centuries the Roman Catholic Church made the reading of the scriptures a crime punishable by death. Men, women, and youth were burned at the stake or suffered torture and other forms of inhumane and degrading treatment. Some were left to waste away their lives in cold, dark dungeons merely for being in possession of a page of this book. When eventually brave men risked their lives and that of their families and published the Bible in the native tongues of the people, the Holy Roman Catholic Church took on the word of its vilification. And in this work, the Jesuits played an outstanding part. 
You know, Loyola encouraged Pope Paul III to restore the Inquisition. We know that from Rulers of Evil, where it says that after the ordination of the Jesuit order in 1540, two years later, the Jesuits took over the Inquisition from the Dominicans. The Jesuits played an outstanding part. Yeah, if the Jesuits hate the Bible so much, is it any surprise that they would seek to destroy it, if not directly? By consequence? What does this matter if not directly by consequence? If they don't have the possibility anymore to go around, collect every Bible and put it to the stake and burn it, they can forgerize it. And when they forgerize, when they corrupt the word of God, it is as good as burning it. Because when there is taken away from the word of God, or when there is added to the word of God, it is not the word of God anymore, it is the word of man. This is what the author means when he says, if not directly, the Bible could be destroyed, it could be destroyed by consequence. The consequence of putting false words into the mouth of God. Consider the following salient facts about all the newer Bible versions copyright to which are owned by Rome. It is a little known fact that all the newer Bible versions, for example, the NIV, the NASV, and I read a few lot of others on the cover of the New Age Bible versions, all are based not on the original manuscript from which the King James Version was derived, the Textus Receptus, the received text, but on two so-called quote-unquote, ancient manuscripts found in the custody of the Roman Catholic Church, the Codex Sinaiticus and the Codex Vaticanus. The first of these precious documents, as base a counterfeit as the institution that created it, was discovered in a wastebasket in 1844 by Dr. Lubegott Friedrich Konstantin von Tischendorf, in the convent of St. Catherine's Monastery near Mount Sinai. Now allow me to just <laughs> <laughs> make a little pause when I read that this was discovered in 1844. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the year the Seventh-day Adventist use as saying there Jesus started his investigative judgment in heaven? This satanic lie, this satanic false interpretation of Daniel chapter 8, wasn't that 1844? Yes, it was. Do you think that is a coincidence, that that is such an important year? Discovered in a wastebasket by Dr. von Tischendorf in the convent of St. Catherine's Monastery near Mount Sinai. What's a convent? <laughs> a cloister. A place where women separate themselves from the world and so-called give their lives to God. They give their lives to the God of this world, not to the God of the Bible. Because the God of this Bible never speaks of convents, never speaks of monasteries. How can you find the true word of God in a convent that is unbiblical? I don't get it. But if the truth be told, the pontifical palace at Rome was the true source from whence it proceeded. The second of these quote-unquote pearls, the Vaticanus, was quote-unquote found in the Vatican Library in Hold your horses, 1845, just the year after that. That is what they tell us. That is what they tell us, and we have to swallow their lies if we don't do our own research. Yes. That's what they tell us, and we believe that it was at first written also. How convenient that the Catholic Church should be the source of both these ancient manuscripts, the Roman Catholic Church, which calls itself the real, only, apostolic, true Church of Jesus Christ. But a forgery is a forgery, is a forgery! 
proof that the Codex Sinaiticus is a forgery comes in many forms. There is a particular page of the Sinaiticus that contains the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, which raises serious questions about its authenticity. The letter count, number of letters in the column, on that page of the Sinaiticus is not consistent with the letter count on the other pages. Someone has altered the text on that page by removing 12 verses and then tried to make good the changes by doctoring it up so that it would look like all the other pages. That particular page of the Sinaiticus has now been officially deemed a forgery. How could just one page of an quote-unquote ancient manuscript be a forgery and the rest genuine? If one page, why not all of it? And speaking of forgeries, and with that coming to a conclusion for today's reading, mm -hmm. remember the donations of Constantine, who have been, even by the Roman Catholic Church, been an admission that they have been forgerized. There was no original, no genuine donation of Constantine, where Emperor Constantine gave the temporal power to the Bishop of Rome. It's all a forgery. And also the Isidorian Decretals, a mm -hmm. forgery. Mm -hmm. Look it up. I got videos on my first and second YouTube channel on that of Tom Fress, where I put that up. Look it up for yourself. It's all a forgery. When Rome open, opens its mouth, it's a lie. Yeah, I know, we have only read a little bit over one page today, but I don't care. I think that every word that we said today was important, and that it was on the Bible, and that it brings us into the right motion, that next time when we are going to do a reading, which will maybe be probably later tonight, if Brett is in a better shape, mm -hmm. after our Bible study, and I still feel good at 11 or 12 o'clock tonight, we can do another reading, and otherwise we will probably, I hope, come back tomorrow for another reading of the Jesuit Bibles, Changing the Word in this Cold World Babylon, a book that I more and more appreciate with every, se uh, with every session that we go into it, Brett. Thank Good. you very much for the invitation and that you could get out of bed early enough to join me here in the <laughs> afternoon that we could have the session today. Oh, and, yeah. Well, now now turn to another cup of coffee. I will yeah. turn to another, to another uh, ginger tea of mine. Wonderful. And I will see you in a few hours for Bible study, Brett. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear listener and viewer of this video, for um, hanging on, hanging in there, and being willing to learn and understand and get discernment of the King James 11 Bible, the King James 1611 Bible, the authorized version, of which billions and billions of editions have been printed, and they all contain the true word of God. Get one as long as you can still get one. Just today, I got news from my Dutch mm. friend, Barry Winkel, Mm -hmm. who wanted to do another reading of Genesis with me this afternoon. And I said, sorry, I have an appointment already with Brett on reading Cold World Babylon, and mm. then I have Bible study. But he said that he could get his hands on for nine euros. He got a 1611 King James red letter Bible. Beautiful. Where the words of Jesus are in red, and I congratulated him with that. Wonderful. Dear listener, also get that King James Bible, and if you don't have the money to buy it, then look it up online. They are still the correct Bibles there, the 1611 uh, websites. They don't produce forgerized words there. It is the original Bible. Um, thanks, listeners and watchers of this video. Thanks, Brett. And until next time, I don't have any more to say, but may God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you again, Yerk. That was another reading of Code Word Barbalon we have done now. And uh, I believe we're well over 20 parts at the moment. And I will have to back up my data here and uh, proceed for our next editions because uh, I have this tiny little 
memory bank in my computer <laughs> at the moment. But anyway, I really appreciate your help, Yerk, in uh, reading this book and discussing it with me, and uh, I hope that we can be of some kind of benefit to you, Miss Mr. and Mrs. Listener, <laughs> listening to this video. And uh, we thank you, and we ask the Lord's blessing in Jesus' name on you with the reading of his wonderful word, and preserve his words and his, uh, his way and his truth and his life for, uh, for all eternity. That is the purpose and the goal of our life, that we might be sanctified by Christ. And with that, we end the broadcast for today, and we'll catch up with you next time. God bless and bye-bye. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up. Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may require them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and Amen. <laughs>